except for consent with gender is written. I second it. All in favor. Um, this evening for announcements, um, I have, um, some of you may have been out and about enough to notice that there is construction going on on the Meadows Road um, as the new traffic light is going in. Um, it is likely that there will be traffic disruptions occasionally through the summer, but the uh, plan is that the project will be completed by the end of September. The only possible wrinkle is that the arms that um, actually hold the light are back ordered. And um, so if they can't get those, then the, then the contract will be extended and we will wait a little bit longer for our long-awaited light. Um, they're going to have um, they're going to have some restrictions on how they work as well because of the coronavirus um, guidelines for social distancing. I think it must be rather difficult to work in construction on some jobs and maintain social distancing. So they're working as carefully as they can. Um, we are here primarily for the bid opening. Christine, may we have the bids? <laughs> yes. We received two bids. They were due on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, April 22nd. First is from J.R. Hill and Sons, and I will let you read the figures out loud. So, year one is two hundred and forty-seven seven hundred and seven thousand. Second year is two fifty-five one eighty, and the third year is two sixty-three eight hundred. All prices are negotiable due to salt and sand prices per year and usages. You know what that came from for the three year? What's that? I was just wondering if we knew what the three year to look complete total was. Yeah, I don't think they added it up. No, they do no. not. Around 765000 That's not long. That's not? Um, how further, how much is it? Well, let's do the other one, then, then I'll ask my notes questions. <laughs> the second bit is from Goodall Landscaping. And this is done the same way. First year is 224,698. Second year is 231,438. Third year is 238, 381. Okay, those, those included the sand. That includes sand the sand. Yeah. They'll be paying for the salt too. Oh. And the salt. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure that I like the way those came. Would you say more? <laughs> I just think I would expect more details rather than just a total for each year. That's the, what we're the, that's the what asking for based on the contract. Yeah. She oh, well, I'm not know. saying that, Steve. I, I know what we asked for. But going right. forward, to okay. me, that's not an acceptable to have a total at the end of the three years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we should have the bid attached to it, showing yeah. what they've committed to. Well, it was the contract that you right. Right. you looked at that accepted. I mean, usually, in my experience, you just submit a bid form based right. on the package. Right. I would just say if I did this another year, I would want more. And, and at least if you can't total up, then give us your total bid. Right. Right. That was. <coughs> um, and what was last year? Last year did not include sand or salt. Okay. Which will make a significant difference. And do we know what we... Well, we spent, what, 40000 in sand and salt last year? Um, we 
didn't have a very snowy winter. No. Right? And this and thirty-five thousand. And good also. Ah, thirty-five thousand. Yeah. And what was Do the contract? You know I don't have the year before. Do you know what the contract price was for Goodall last year? For this season? No, I didn't write it down. And I don't have it with me. I don't remember. I think it's like 167 or something. Yeah. getting 696.518 inclusive of sand and from seven huh, sorry from Hill from Goodall from Goodall Goodall didn't include sand no the yeah they're they're paying yeah. for both they oh, know that it? they're paying for both salt and sand all prices are negotiable due to salt and sand prices per year well that's just what Hill wrote that's all. yeah he, he basically he wrote that case that was, the sand was cheaper and it would be a better deal they know that they're paying for salt and sand. Yeah. And um, so I came up with seven sixty six seven thirty to six ninety six five eighteen. I'm just curious of the increase from last year. It seems like it's almost, it seems to me it's going to be like 60 grand more than it was last year. And then about 35 to 40 would account for the potential price of sand and salt? No, no. Oh. As I stand with sand and salt not in the figures, Thousand apart. It's seventy. Uh, Sixty-six thousand. Sand and salt was included in the bid. Right. On both of them. On both of them. Right. Yeah. So the figures that without because it's included whatever it ends up it ends up as. So it's. It's seven sixty-six. 000. Yeah, seventy thousand apart. Yep. Yeah. Which is not bad. Which. If you're just talking about one of these two guys, or we want to do more sir research on it. I know this is a hard time to, with only two bidders, we like to have you know, three or four. I don't know the reasoning why we didn't get more bids, but it would be nice to have mm. a little more comparison. Um, between these two guys here, well that, for Hill's price, that where he's a, town, a local town person, and I've been discussing some things with, with Jamie of other people helping him in the town when he needed it or something. They'd be more fortunate to help him than good all. Um, and he's within that 10 percent. Yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, within that 10 percent of being a resident. So do we have that as a written policy? No, we do not. And so we, because we had a, a letter come back about that, mm -hmm. that we need to quantify before we start um, it, we can't claim a 10% if it's not part of the I policy. thought it was in the bylaws. It is not. No. We, and that came back as a complaint on the last bit of Yeah, we don't have anything written. It's been a long-standing custom. Right. Um, 
And we are legally entitled to either accept all the bids, none of the bids, or whichever one we choose to right. accept. But you can't make a stipulation of a 10% clause right. if it's not in there. No, we have. We don't have to have a stipulation. We can award the contract on the basis of the contract that we prefer and the contractor that right. we prefer. Understood, but at the we know it was recorded. We didn't word it, that way. it was recorded at the meeting right. when it was presented that we took it because of the ten percent clause that is yeah. not existent. Gotcha. So that's how we have to. No, yeah. it's. So I guess what I, I would like to do personally as the road commission, I would like to go through these numbers and figure out exactly what we're paying a mile, and see if it's far fetched or not um, per mile. Most like of these towns do their. Uh, bidding so much per mile, yeah, and that way, they, if they needed to get a couple extra contractors in there, then they take this much miles and that much miles just to see if he's close in there. If these numbers even make sense for either person, I think and we should we'll reopen get, that and put it out there again with more stipulations. What would those stipulations be, and how would I work them into the contract? I think we need to know what they're charging us for salt and sand. Are their figures they're totally not well, completely different? Price per mile. I mean, I don't think we have enough here. It's just figures. I can tell you I want a quarter million dollars to do these roads, and, and there's really nothing here saying what you're doing with that quarter million dollars. But on that contract, <clears throat> it says what we expect from him. So they have to meet that. If they do not meet that, and then we jump on them and say, you breach the contract, you're not doing it. We give... That worked well last year. It's true. <laughs> Sorry, I, I mean, I just... We're not gonna know how much salt we need them to provide to do the right thing. No, record. but if one has given us a price of Ten dollars a ton, and another two hundred dollars a ton. Where's the? Where are they getting the sand from, and, and why are the figures so different? And we don't know what price per ton we're paying for salt yet, and um, they would be re reimbursing us on the rate that we get for to purchase. Salt. So actually, their figures could be closer together than what their bids are. Is that what you're saying? No, because they, they don't the same. know what the salt's going to cost them. It should, it should be the same price regardless of who gets no, the No, but what I'm saying, May Hill have overbid <clears throat> because he thinks it's a different cost on the salt versus Goodall who may have used another price when actually it's really going to be the usage and they're not sure what that is. Does Jamie know he can get to that town cost? Yes. <clears throat> well, the problem is that's part of the vision, Kathy. Um, 90% Jamie might plan on putting the grader out there and using less salt and sand. Yes. As long as he does the job that we ask him to do on these jobs, we don't care how much sand and salt he uses, as long as the job is done. All I'm saying, all the contracts I do, they got everything listed out on what they're going to spend. This seems pretty vague to me. When I have vendors do a contract, they better tell me how much they're going to use, if they're leasing a piece of equipment, what they're renting it for, how much they're paying for electricity. They have a hundred different things they need to explain. This seems pretty really bad. Well, this is what we should have done before that one went across you guys' table before we put it up there. I haven't seen it. And this is a local government. You know, it's not quite the same as the state and federal level. So we do see a lot more of that. Right. Like the state You've all seen the contract. You approved it right. at one of your meetings. Right. We didn't re I didn't read it. I, we didn't have time to read it. And I think I, and I think that um, we were looking at a seventy thousand dollar delta. There were things that were left that were in the contract last year, like certain pieces of equipment were required. So we need to before, you know, we need to make sure that they have the equipment that's called for in the contract, which right. was it's part of the contract. And but they didn't have it last year, so we need right. to have it laid out in this contract. It was laid, laid out, out last, last year too. too. Look, you can look at past performance, can't you, as you decide what you want to do? You're, you're correct, and I brought that up four or five times, but I mean, we had no feet to stand on to push it any further because our first administrator, when he got signed on, allowed everything to go that was not 
So what are you going to feed in this? <clears throat> Hopefully we got something to stand on. I don't know. Sally reviewed it. She loved yeah. it. I, I don't think Sally this. reviewed the lawsuit. <laughs> and said we couldn't do anything because we'd be stepping on it. We don't want a lawsuit. So I just want to make sure that we don't. Right. The, what changed in the what changed in the the rewriting in in our what's essentially our second contract was that the, the language is more specific about accountability on account of our past experience. Um, so if you want if you want to put it out to bid, we're going we're going to lose the time that we had hoped to make sure that we had dry sand, which is part of the issue. You're not, you, you have a leg to stand on a little bit on putting it out to bid. I don't have a, a problem with putting it back out to bid and, and tightening up that a little bit because you have had the coronavirus and stuff going on. So people, I mean, right now, if, if we went with this, we're going to say, okay, we're going to say, for instance, we're going over the I should be able to go to Good Auto and make sure he has every piece of equipment ready to go. Right now. If you don't have them, then it's, you don't so get the contract. Say we award this, say Good Auto, and you go and you find out who doesn't have that. What are you saying? Is this enough time to rebid it or give it to the next? Or you give it to the next one all the bidders? Presuming he's available. The problem is that we, we need to make sure they have contracts. The problem is I'd like to see at least three to four more. Three or four bidders, so we can compare apples to apples a little bit better. I mean, the sand and, and <clears throat> that's the biggest thing is we use way too much salt and sand. We, that, then we made it to the last few years because that's what he, you know, you know, the contractor we had relied on. He had that follow with all the salt he wanted to use up there. Now these contractors are bidding with equipment that they're supposed to have. Now that greater makes a big difference whether people want to say or not. If you start getting these roads slushy and you need to cut that stuff off them, and set, if you don't have all that salt to use, you're going to be able to babysit a lot more. Um, so, so your recommendation, Steve, it's sitting in your road commissioner chair, socially distanced appropriately, I might add, <laughs> um, is that we should put this out to bid again to see if we can sn snag a couple more bidders. I would like to see a couple more bidders. How many did we have three years ago? We've run across this issue in the past, though, where we wanted to put something out to bid again, and there was concern because these bidders have already shown their hand. Right. Their right. bidders are already yep. out there. Is that right. an issue? It is an issue. Mm -hmm. And additionally, a lot of towns have let these bids m months ago, and so are, is it possible we will find ourselves without anybody, they've already committed to other mis municipalities, and we won't be getting... And that's the risk I think we take if we what? don't take one of these tonight also. Let me, throw, let me throw this out there, okay? How about if we put a bid out for so much per mile, and let's try to see what we can get people to put a price per mile for a truck out there, and see what we can put together for three or four different contractors to get in on that state. You do the Santa Crossing Road, this guy does that. And then you got three or four contractors out here doing your town. If somebody breaks down, they can communicate and one can help out one another. Does all the contractors need a grade up? No, as long as you don't. And one, that's a whole other contract. Somebody contract to somebody need to 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 Yeah. You have a right to call in the contractors and negotiate with them. This Either one or both. You can I ask for more right figures now, from these two. Jamie Hill's bid, he, he asked me if I, he could have my grader, if I would supplement my grader out for his contract, and another truck and a 550 to help him to have everything. And I said yes, because I'd like to see it stay in the town. Cause it's, you can work with people in your town, but then you work with somebody out of town. Half the time, they didn't even know what snow it was now. So that's, I, I would love to support our local community. <clears throat> but we're looking at a delta of $70,000 in a year that we don't know what our revenues are going to be right now. And we, we don't know where we're going to end up. 
And that's really, really concerning for me as we're starting to look at our budget process. Mm -hmm. That there's, you know, there's things that may or may not be able to put on warrants because we don't know where we're heading. I think that we, we have a fiscal issue on revenues with everything that's going on. Okay. That, that to me is a gigantic concern to give someone a $70,000 loan. It's not $70,000 over three years, so you all look at it. $70,000 a year. Right. Do you want to rely on it all again and have what happened to us last year? My or whoever? It uh, through at the end. I think the safety we, of the we citizens is very important. My, and we can get rid of recycling. My, okay. My, that's okay. If we come to terms on saying, it's a give take because of where we are fiscally, we need to be fiscally responsible. We don't have capacity right now. I, I don't believe we have capacity to add a twenty thousand dollar hit to a line item when we are at risk of not getting a lot of revenue in the door. So as a town, we have to then say, okay, we do this, we don't do this. So if we want to award this locally, can we go in negotiations with him to see if he would reduce his Yes, you can negotiate with either one or both contractors. My sense is, A, we have had, we had two good years of performance, although I know you had concerns from the get-go about the way in which things were being done. Um, we did not have a very good experience in the last year. So I'm not sure that $20,000 a year, if we had had more snow, $20,000 a year would have been way worth it. We were lucky in that we did not have a snowy, icy winter. That was luck. It certainly isn't the way that we've had the storms before. I don't think there's anybody in the town of West Bath who's going to say we would prefer not to have safe roads. Jamie Hill, J.R. Hill, is reliable, he's local, he drives the same roads that we do. He pays a whale of an excise tax bill. He pays his personal property tax. So some of that money is coming from him that he's putting back into the town. I don't think we will have lost anything by awarding him the bid. I think we should negotiate with him and see what he can do before we make a decision. We can certainly talk about it. There's a significant amount of sand that's still in the, bit, in the building. Okay. That may reduce his numbers as far as we can. We could sell him that sand that's left under agreement and salt, which would drop it down big time for this first year. Also, I want to do my research and see per mile. And just let me work some of these figures and I'll get back to you guys and let you know whether it's even close enough. If we can, you know, but I'm really pushing. We've tried these people out of town. And the reason he looked so good the first two years is because of Jamie. Jamie took pride. Jamie had the extra gear, the guys that he needed to put with him. So right. that's why he looked so good the first two years. Then after that, and, and I, I like it all. He's a good guy to talk to himself. But the problem was he had way too much on his plate. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have the crew. He was putting guys in the trucks that never even plowed snow before. And then he turned around, well, they can't drive a big truck, so they, he puts them in a small truck, and we're doing our whole town with one tons and stuff, and that's what's <coughs> coming into our issue. <coughs> we had a real winter. Yeah, we would have had a, a one three foot snowstorm would have knocked us out. Yeah. Well, I don't think this pandemic's going away anytime soon. I think that we have a lot more um, requests for. Um, general assistance that we haven't had in the past year. So I think any negotiations, if you can say that's five thousand dollars a year is worth looking into. Is that I can I will over the few days go them like I said, I'm gonna call I'm gonna call Ward and get theirs and Pittsburgh, um do it whatever and just get what they're getting most of these towns are doing it per mile. They yeah. figure out so much a mile and you got to make sure we have the faculty that are supplying the sand and the salt, and then we'll go from there. I'm worried about this town being able to sustain everything it pays for right now, and I am worried about um, trying to not become a burden on people to the point that they can't afford their taxes. And we should have to look at this long term, and if we can save a nickel here, a 
nickel there. Um, I think we need to request all the folks that are that they need to resharpen their requests for money this year. Yeah, every committee that's presented their numbers to us, and we didn't get to our final figures, you know, because of what was going on. We need to say, you know what? Bare bones right now. We can always add something in if we have it, but we, we have got to be very conscious of the lack of revenue that could be facing us down the road. We That's have no idea job, yeah. what well, it's going to be. And we can you talk more about it later, but you don't even need to have a town meeting. And that's right. something that you can consider we can, as well. We can flat fund everything. Yes. Didn't you identify how many miles there were in the RFP? Yeah. So, so you just divide by? Right. Yeah, just divide by. It's not a big deal. I mean, Didn't you say 27? So, okay. Okay. So but I think there's a fair amount of product still in the sand shed. I think that's worth talking about. So shall we table this while Steve does his further negotiation? I think and I will, I will not leave good all out. I'd be more glad to negotiate with him, yep. too, and talk to him. Yep. I mean, he's he had come up for the plate at the end of the year, but I mean, I just like see these figures a little bit lower because I think right now they're about 60,000 higher than they should be. Well, and, and, just, and, and at the time, we don't have the money for it. Right. Also. I mean, this so is a long time to make a big hike. For, and it's not just him. I think, it's, I think yep. it's across all of the our request for funds. We and need to reevaluate. People are losing jobs all the time. time. People are not going to be out there driving around like they have. People aren't going to be going to work, so that they need to be on the roads immediately. I mean, there may be even times that we still need to be able to make sure, though, that our fire is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. But that, that means well, what the people in this town yeah. expects them to yeah. be. We can't look at that. We well, they said, done right. well, they said last right. year they couldn't get up to some places. Yeah. So, it's true. And a postman couldn't deliver. He said he couldn't go up. Right. So, so, so in lieu of not having a town meeting, what are the options? Because I know that's, or I know we're going to talk about that later. Right. Right. There was an LD that was passed that allows the town to use the current budget through the next budget year. But I don't necessarily want to make commitments to people at that, what we committed to last year. Right. We are over, I think, over committing at that point because we don't have the revenue. And that's a huge yeah. concern. Can we move to, I'd like to um, move to table. Move to table item number one, um, the bid opening for the winter growth meeting. I second it. All in favor of table. Okay. That will take care of that. I think that um, what we should do in terms of town meeting is set a tentative date. If things open up, we can have town meeting. We can recommend flat funding on the basis of whatever. We can't flat fund everything because the school budget includes contracts for for um, pay increases, right. at least for the teachers union, that is we true. can't do, we can't flat fund everything. We can take it out of the weeks they've had off. <laughs> they haven't had they have they been been worked harder. Harder. They've been working harder than ever. Than ever. Um, and would, would increases be able to be done as like just a special town meeting without redo doing the yes. whole budget? Yes, we, we could do We it. would have to have a special town meeting for the fire truck anyway. Yeah. So, so that's that. one option. You have several options. You can piggyback any increases that are necessary with the school. But there may be things that we want to pull off warrants if like we don't the have agencies, the money. Right. And I, if we flat fund, that is not an option. So then the question is, when would you want to shoot for for town meeting? What date would you want to? You, you could put it a tentative date in July, and depending upon how, I mean, it's, it's... Why can't we have it in September? Have it outside. July. Well, more act, I think, I think more there's act for this being flat and melting. But there's th there's things that happen in October that you, you there's a lot. October is a, a very important month from a tax perspective. Yeah, that's when we're collecting our taxes. So, so you can't. I don't. You want. You don't want to get that close to that time frame. Right. We'll still have to commit taxes. So there's. You need to. Have, you need to know what you're on the hook for before yeah, you say. I was just looking at the fall. You know, no, but it's July might be the sweet spot. I think at this point, we set a tentative date, and then we do what everybody else in the world is doing, which is to see what else is happening as we get closer. Is that's it, all we can do. Is it appropriate at this point to go back out to the everyone that's come in initially with their request for funds and say, we need you to sharpen your pencils, we'd like you to resubmit no, that? We can, we yeah. can 
we can decide whatever it is we want to fund anything at. That we do not have to honor anybody's request. The town meeting decides what the budget is. Mm -hmm. But assuming that we don't flat fund. And it's your warrant, you can decide. Is that, I, mean, I just want to make sure that we have that. So what do we do about when you say flat funding and somebody's already asked for an increase? They don't get it. They don't, they get, don't it. get it. So but there's, the but there's, kick us out. the board of well, select. Or, or we may choose not to, that's my, but that actually comes to an item that there might be items that we pull off a warrant. That, uh, so I, my concern is if we commit to flat funding, they're committed to last year's spend. And I'm not necessarily sure that, that we're going to fund everything that was on there based upon what our income is going to be. We don't entirely have to rely on the income because we still have not spent the surplus. We have a little bit of time so that we don't necessarily have to cut important things. Nothing important should be cut. Um, and I don't think we've funded very much that's not important. I just think there's line items that we, we just need to look at it. We don't know what our funding, and I, I don't necessarily want to spend our savings either. I think we need to be cautious on. I absolutely agree that we don't need to spend any unnecessary money. We also don't need to cut things that are important. I would like to see us go ahead, for instance, and upgrade the office computers because they can't function. Right. The way that they need to function. Yeah, we that's can't become do this, very clear during this time. We can't do this on Zoom because the office computers don't have Zoom. And that is not helpful. <laughs> they can't, they don't have the capacity. It's internet. It's not, they have internet. It's that their computers we are too cameras, old. We don't have cameras, we don't. Their computers We're are too not old. Equipped. Nope. We're ill-equipped. And that needs to be fixed. The, especially since everything is being done with electronics, you need to have the capacity for the people who work in the office to be in touch with other people. They can't go to meetings, but meetings must be held. So that's, um, I think that's one thing that we really need to, t to tend to, and that needs to be done at least in part on next year's budget. Um, So the Budget Advisory Committee, has that been disbanded? No, the Budget okay. Advisory Committee is in abeyance like everybody else. Um, I don't know if they have Zoom capacity. Um, I haven't heard anything about meetings. Well, because meetings, so. everything's been on the theory where there should be no public contact. We, in well, we shouldn't be doing this. Um, and we're rewarding that. But, oh. but, but you're not, you're not, it's, but it's, we have appropriate social distancing, <laughs> and I that, um, and we're, do we want to go on to item Please. two? So, um, let's take business item two, um, and um, business item two is the maintenance of the, of the town parking lots. Um, Mark Travis has um, offered to extend his contract um, for the same price that we were paying him in, in years previous. Um, and that will save us a good deal of effort uh, for putting things up to bid, trying to get together to read them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and probably money. And probably money. Oh yeah, definitely. That's that's a good deal. I I think it's a good deal. I move that we move forward with his contract extension. I second that. All in favor. Okay. Oh, I added um, flat funding. How yeah. long are we extending it? It says one year. For one, one, year. one year. I'll go free if you want. I think we should review it on a yearly basis and see where we are. One with a renewal. Yeah. I, if, if we need to, Mark, as soon as we can, I would like to give you a pay increase because you have done good work. So when the town is in a position to be able to know how much money we have, we, we should raise the price. The cost of living hasn't gone down, I've noticed. So, um, but very, 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 much, very much appreciate this offer. 
And that's just another example of why we need to award our contracts to our town. I agree. I agree. Uh, our townspeople are the people who care the most and love us best. <clears throat> Both of these bidders on the roads went an extra seven thousand dollars per year. So that's twenty one thousand dollars over a three year period. This man is give you a I remember the Okay. Business item three, town office hours. Um, we have been operating um, in the town office with only one person in the office at a time. Um, and they miss each other. Um, <laughs> um, so if we give permission the staff would, uh, would work together in the office Monday through Friday, nine to two, um, but the office still would not be open to the public. What about having them home office as an option? So that we still keep social distancing to an effect until we know for sure what's going on. Home office and working from home? Or they've been, so they've been doing, doing that. Yeah. yeah, to an extent. There's a finite the, amount that you can really do. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's, it's been very difficult. I would and just ask that you put some protocols in place, like maybe the first thing you do when you come in. Most of you would probably do this anyways, but to check in with anyone. Do you have any of the signs of COVID? And if you do, yeah. please don't oh, come yes. to work. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, just checking in with one another and making sure that none of you have had any of those signs or symptoms. Um, are you trying to stay? Are you and Julie able to stay? Absolutely. You do the answer six feet apart. They're six feet apart, and a lot of what I'm doing at this point is clerical filing that can be done. And I can pick it up and move it to Mill's another. speech today, she, she did say that she's not making any decisions today, but she did talk about slowly letting state employees go in and small numbers and start combing in and, and trying to get work done in the office. So yes. I, I think we just have to rely on Glad we get such good employees that um, you don't have to babysit and you know what you need yeah. to do. And I think we're a small enough crew that we can stay on top of it. I think the other thing that's important is to, to note is that there are some things that should not ever leave the town office in terms of the records, etc. The needs, work needs to be done yeah. there. Yeah. So, um, and from a customer service standpoint, it's been really challenging too. And just to make sure that your phones are all comfortable busy. with that, that mm -hmm. you're not saying they have to, that they're all in the green right. yeah. No, I've heard the same thing expressed from Julie. She's very eager to yeah. have a five day work week and be able to get her done. And I, and I also think that we should proceed with the understanding that should any of you at any time begin to feel uncomfortable with the way that things are or concerned about your health or somebody else's, then you have the option not to uh, work. Call one another to check in. Um, and of course, you would be paid for your time. Because there's no point, there's no point laying off the time clerk. <laughs> Um, do we have a, a, a plan in place as we start to perhaps slowly open processes so that, you know, all of a sudden you don't say, hey, everyone come register your car, you have 500 people show up. Um, do we want to follow kind of what they're doing for the unemployment? You're, you're still locked, right? You're We're still, still locked, locked. yes. Yeah, right. but as she, if, she, if we start to see advancement in allowing the general public to come to the town hall, do we want to start deciding and maybe mirroring what they're doing with the unemployment process when you're calling in A through something is on Monday, K through something or whatever that, can, so that you're not just hit by all of these people at one time. I was saying it would be smart, obviously, to limit the number of people inside the town office. But you, you can't can, imagine you, having more than you make them stand outside, outside. Yeah. like the rest of us. Yeah, but the rest of the places. But alphabetically, I don't know what we can do. 
you know, would have put it that extent. I'm never going to the town office again. What if, um, what if we asked, I, I, come do, to you. I can do it all online. What if we asked in the first few weeks, I assume that there's going to be a backlog of people trying to register vehicles. Not until they have to. And they're not, they're, no, they're not. They want to. This is crazy. When you tell people they don't have to register their vehicles, they still really want to. Yeah. Um, but what if we space that out and ask people to come by appointment? That way you have, you would, you would have control of the number of, the, of people who were in the office at a time. But that makes sense. just put the distancing things outside. Well, you would. You yeah. would. So that you, still, you only have still, one person. You can still have 30 time. people. I mean, at the very beginning, I'm concerned that there's going to be this huge flood. I think there's a lot of us that aren't going to want to go into any yeah. place. So maybe a wait and see approach. But I mean, I drive by. I would Walmart put a sign outside that says, <laughs> you know, three people maximum or two feet. Please respect the six foot. That's what a lot of places. I mean, well, even like, having two people in puts them right next to each other. On I, the right, I don't even right. want yeah. that at a time. One at a time. One at a time. I, one at a time. I, think, I think by opening, when the opening starts, mm -hmm. to control the crowd, have people, ask people to kindly make an appointment, and if you are there early, or if the person in front of you is taking too much time, then we go to the six foot. And if you have people come in in 15 minute increments to do car registrations, I, mean, I just mostly think it's going to be hard to get the message out. Appointment only. People are going to drive by, they're going to see people waiting, and they're going to say, oh, good, they're open. There's yeah, only two people. Do, I'm not an appointment type person. It's when I have time. Yeah, they can stand outside. It's going to be better weather, hopefully. And if it's mm -hmm. not, I'm and not it will take time outside. to set up right. appointments. It's You're going to need something. Right. Would an appointment be an option? Or something, I think it, it would takes be. Away from their other work. I see it some very. There are a lot of pros to having an appointment because you can know who's going to be there and what they're requiring. I just, we've never done it before, so it would take a lot to set up. I think it's something that we can discuss next week when we're all together. Yeah. And if you have the plan, because then if you, if you put it on the website and you start you know, saying yeah. when we open, this is going to be the process. We don't know when that's going to be. Did um, that open? So no, I don't think anybody's open to the public. Yeah, I think they opened something. Hmm. I can't remember what it was. But if we had perhaps an afternoon, I'm thinking of people who have business that they need to accomplish at the town office and who are in the vulnerable populations mm -hmm. with an immunity problem, with a pre-existing condition, with a, with a propensity to catch pneumonia, with the slightest cold. Mm -hmm. Those people need to be kept safe so that if we had advanced publicity that there will be so many afternoons in such and such a stretch of time that if you can, you can accomplish your business by appointment, then if you want to do the drop-in, then you have the bulk of the time would be available for the regular kind of stand in line. But there are some people for whom standing in line is going to be a physical impossibility, and they'll have to keep coming back and coming back and coming back. I think it's reasonable to contact us for an accommodation. I think that would be great. And I'm and sure all that the stores have that. hours for right. people over 60. Because they even, we've had instances where Carly and Julie have gone out to a vehicle yeah. to have something signed. So, and do people typically know what they need? Well, I was already thinking when we do reopen, there will be a strong push of when, when you're registering a car, make sure you bring your insurance and your, insurance and your mileage. You know, just maybe maybe start getting so that as you prepare. But of course, the older population is the population that not isn't necessarily checking websites and right. on social media. So you can put a, also a sandwich board. Of put, I mean, there's things yeah. there's things that we can do. Yeah, we could do. People don't need yeah. to read the sign Always. that says closed. It One simple be. word on the door, they cannot read that. So expecting people to read a sign of requirements, asking a lot as well. Yeah. It would be worth it at this point to send a one-page flyer to every household in West Bath. When, it's, when we are ready to, to start reopening, to do a, mail, eat a, a snail mail 
to every household about this is the plan, this is how you do it. If you're 60 or older or have a, a pre-existing condition that makes you more vulnerable, then you can contact the town office and make an appointment for such and such time. That kind of that kind of thing, so that we know that insofar as the post office works, which does amazingly well, um, people will have had in their hands a piece of paper that says what is going to happen. I think that can be really helpful. So why don't you guys, when you get back as a group, come up with your plan on what you think and what, you, what are the traditional things that people forget that they need. They're not going back out to their car. So that it's a one trip event. And maybe a note on the, on the door that says, if you are registering, do you have? But even put, I, I think you should put a sandwich board out there that says, I assure you, here are the hours. Here are the I know they won't be there, but people don't read it. They won't read. But, but you have done everything you can. It makes any difference. Stop being naysayers now. But some people do read these things. You might also remind people, if you're going to send out a flyer, that here's the links on our website for you to register online, blah, 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 blah. These are always options for, for people who, you know, like you said, they don't read, then send it. If you're going to send them a piece of paper, then fill a sheet. The, the, uh, the target population, particularly for appointments, is much more used to paying attention to a piece of paper than to a thing that exists in cyberspace. So, um, and there are still people an amazing number of people who do not have internet service in their homes. I didn't until this started. <laughs> you got to finish it, Jeff. It was up one more time. <laughs> Unfortunately, I learned how to use Microsoft groups and Zoom and Teams. Teams, and that's. <laughs> yeah, and once and you get it down, it works well. Yes. They're lovely when they work, they don't always. No, it was down most of the day today for anybody working. Anyway, so the upshot is, yes, you may go to work with each other from 9 to 2, but it will not be open to the public. Thank you. And thank you for working through and for wanting to work with each other in a fairly small space. That's nice. <laughs> Okay, um, we do, let's set a tentative kind of bud budget for the annual town budget meeting. Um, and then what I think we all should do is take a look at last year's town meeting book and take a look at the appropriations, um, see what's going on, maybe ask the, uh, I would be happy to ask the Budget Advisory Committee Chair um, what he thinks about how to continue with the budget process. Um, those folks know an awful lot about the budget. And I would not, I would hesitate to make changes to last year's budget without consulting with them. They just know stuff. A lot of experience with budgeting. How many budgets are this year? Yeah, we don't have any choice about the kind of budget. That's the trouble is people who don't have choices and you have to pay those. Things. Right. And, you better really and I do. We have we have had the luxury in in the last several years of being able to not put anything into the general assistance, but the likelihood it's of huge. being able to draw that. Down without replenishing is just mm -hmm. And we it. didn't put anything in it, did we? We didn't have to. So we put, yeah, so we might have to. Because we had decided, on. we had decided to leave it at 15,000 mm -hmm. because we has had so few calls. Mm -hmm. But I know that Julie has already had calls for it. Yeah. And I'm afraid that there will be more. Yeah. So well, that's it. You know, we, more. prior to having all this happen, you know, the West Bath community had doubled their food pantry request in Bath prior to this. 
So I can only imagine where we are there now. So there's certain allocations that, truthfully, we need to look at what's going to shift to cover the real immediate need. So when you talk to the, the committee, maybe that's just maybe an invention to them, and maybe they'll have to look at and yeah. some funding to that. No, because we, we doubled our year over year at the food pantry before this. Right. Right. So the um, if we um, the, Christine had suggested that we aim for a July July 15th, assuming that we uh, are allowed to have public assemblies. I think it would be really helpful to Emily in particular because um, the statute requires her to have certain public hearings and it would allow her to come up with some dates that yeah. she can shoot for. Right, and um, we may have to, they're going to have to allow exceptions because if we can't have meetings of more than 100 people, Mm -hmm. If that's a generous, um, that's a wildly fantastic idea. Well, I don't know if they'll let us in that space every day. No? Nope. Yeah. Way too close. We'd have to get like maybe the junior high gym. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Um, or outside. I mean, there's no reason why we couldn't try and do something outside as well. Hearing. Yeah. Hearing? Hearing for elderly people is really hard outside with birds and trucks. Birds and trucks and wind and the microphones. If you, mm -hmm. Older people mm -hmm. could not hear. Same people who go to Sunday service and Easter service and sunrise service. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they well, don't. Well, I'm hearing impaired, but I can hear outside. Not everybody can. I know. But, but if that's the best way for us to get the mass in there, I, I think it's certainly worth something to consider. I'm not saying it's better than anything else. Let me just cut it off right away. That's all. Um, and if you set a date and it rains. Well, you can have to have a bathtub. <laughs> yeah. So if you get the wet. Um, I'm just getting a nice junior high or something. If we can get it good. Could you check the RC1 depart school department and see if um, we could use that to if the if the middle school gym might be available, if we need it, the only place I can think of that's big. What about the YMCA? They don't have a room big enough. They have the whole basketball court. It's not as big as the. Uh, if you can, if you consider I the think the bleachers, would be better at the junior yeah. 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 If you consider the bleachers and the floor at the at the middle school, that's. That's the biggest is six feet. It's the biggest room we've got to get down. Because you can climb the walls with that and you can't on the at the wall. Is it good with the Morse High School revenue? <laughs> <laughs> the re Morse, my daughter calls it. Yeah. Um, okay, so do we have a general consensus that we will aim for July 15th? I make a motion that we aim for July 15th for the town meeting and I second it. See how it goes. And contingent on what happens, um, as is everything. So, all in favor of setting a tentative date for July 15th? is actually July 14th, oh, right sorry. here at this very building. Uh, absentee ballots aren't available yet, but you can currently request them. Uh, all that information is up online. And I've gotten it out to parties so that the Democratic and the Republican Party can distribute applications as well to get the word yeah. out there. Well, if we're going to be sending a sheet out about coming and registering, there's other things. We can put that on there. We can put plan meeting, you know, potential. I mean, just if we're going to do it, we should put any upcoming. Absolutely. Is the state going to let that happen still, as far as we know? The state's moving forward with it, yeah. 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 Because we it's have such, we have easy access to absentee ballots. No, I just meant that. Actually, I'll be in person. You just control the people who come in and come out. Be all uh, they sent out they they sent out a survey to the clerks asking like how many people we expected. I think they'll only allow a certain number of people in the building. And 
many so people will line up outside. Yeah. So we'll have to have like a line monitor yeah. out there maybe. Yeah. But I'm getting about 20 absentee requests a day, so yeah. okay. hopefully the majority will vote. Okay. If you need a poll on like this. Absolutely. You want someone to stand outside and distance them off the rep for you? <laughs> Seriously. Oh, excellent. Good. Okay. Um, do we have any other other? Not this time. You're, you're, you're planning for later? Um, bring it up later. Here, students. Ooh. Always make sure that they tune into the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, if possible, given whatever the state of the world is in, we would be having an, another Board of Selectmen meeting on May 11th. And that also would be a, um, held here at 5.30 in the fire hall, again, with appropriate social distancing. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, stand up and leave. Thank you.